these behind the scenes whisper networks and and all this shit for years, and we, we're we're finally to a point where they're they're uh, straight up admitting, you know, that it's happening. Did he say Don Noble? I don't. I can't remember if he did. He didn't have to. He doesn't have to. He, he doesn't have to. You know, it's him. He never named anybody specifically. He said, but you can probably guess. I think he said. Yeah. yeah. Now I did say that I believe, and I, Kevin is right. Him and I talked privately. The, the drama can rope you in, and you can become a drama queen really quick. Mm -hmm. I am in favor of all the people who think that these this very small group of writers and editor, uh, editors who try to gatekeep. So many people are against them. We you can gate, you can gatekeep in so much as you can you can hang out on Facebook comments and and uh, and and trash people's names, but to actually interfere with a contract that's fucking illegal. That is serious, but I'm saying if all the people would just freaking get some courage and come against these people and name them publicly, and who would even want, who would even want to do business with a publisher so petty, uh, like Ben saying that they they go and and talk to literally go and and attack individual authors for even having the uh, audacity to read the fiction of the of the writers they don't like. These people are corny as fuck. Mm -hmm. That is corny. But I just wish more people would say it. Like, say the 70 people who always go to freaking Jeff O'Brien's posts and heart react. Say there were more people being on there being like, dude, stop this. You're annoying. You're exactly. not fucking literature. That would, I think that could end it if you knocked him off his high horse of constant approval. Because that's why he, guys, he, um, gets, he gets heart reacts. Guys, I wasn't even going to devote much time to this. I was going to just kind of like allude to it, you know, occasionally and then not even touch on it. Just leave them. Yeah, but the I, got, I got fired up whenever I heard Jared because the guy sounds like a genuinely cool fucking dude that got put in a shitty fucking position by Don Noble for no well, reason. Say, just to be, just say, to be though, fucking shitty. Yeah, since it's, since it's been, you know, in, integrated into the conversation now, uh, I, I'm just wondering, Zach, did uh, – so this the, the Don published you uh, with for soothing, soothing the savage swamp beast. No, uh, um, uh, right? Vincenzo, Vincenzo Beloff still uh, had control of Bizarro Pulp Press when Soothing the Savage Beast came out. Basically, oh, yeah, it's so fucking stupid to know that he even owns a book, uh, owns a publisher. He, they've acquired so many dead publishers now that they don't even know they have, uh, you know, they don't even know the inventory, basically. They don't even know the catalog of all the books, uh, all, all the authors that they have published. So you got this 40-year-old fucking middle-aged guy going at, at a college kid, Zach, um, telling him it's not a good look to associate with Kevin Strange and shit. That's his own author. So this guy is in his middle ages, and he can't handle a disagreement with a twenty-something-year-old. Oh, I shut his ass down so quick. And Don, you are fucking pathetic. Jeff O'Brien, you are beneath contempt. You are so beneath. Where, where, where do you I hope Kevin Strange does sue your fucking ass. But well, nobody's gonna sue anyone. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I could, I could, I could. One phone call to John Delaroz, I mean, put me in contact with the with people that would at least send a, a cease and desist letter to him. Uh, I mean, you're free to try, but I, but I personally think it's it's a waste of time. I mean, I don't know about you haven't between... had your contracts canceled for six years. Mm -hmm. They canceled your contract, Ben. Nobody canceled my contract. No. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I thought, but all both of my uh, publishers thought that you know. Uh, it, that the dude was ridiculous. Phoenix, okay. did, you not, did you not listen to the earlier part of the show where Jared Barbie from Death Set Press was on and Jeremy asked um, him why, why he took me out of the anthology? I only got, so I was up for a little bit of it, but I only got the notification like an hour ago. Yeah, so I'm just hot. I'm hot, hot over that. I knew that. Jared and I talked about it privately, but the fact that he was willing to come on here and discuss it publicly, it's just like, I, I published an article on my website this week that chronicles six years of harassment from these people. Now, yeah, the one Jared thing I wanted to say to Jeremy that I didn't was uh, uh, Jeremy Maddox, the, or Jared Barbie, is that his name? Yeah. yeah. Was when he said that uh, there were individuals who would not do business with business with them, et cetera, et cetera. I just wanted to ask, how much would that financially hurt you? Because you also said this is not a thing for the money. Why would you like, you know, 
coward to these individuals for business reasons when it's not an actual job. You're not getting income from this. It's purely an artistic thing. And once you kind of bend over backwards for that, the art kind of loses credibility. Well, he said he was, he regretted it now. I mean, so. That's what makes me so mad. I mean, he, he was so honest about it. And he seems like a really good dude that was put in a really shitty fucking position by a psychopath. That just has it. There's no fucking reason for people not to publish me. No fucking reason at all. Other than that fucking idiot doesn't like me. Um, but that that that's so petty that they actually they they actually went and tried to get you removed from uh, uh, your publishers, Ben. Right. And like I said, apparently uh, when he, uh, you know, when he messaged uh, Bix Gayhill. Um, he didn't even know that Bix had published me. He was only messaging me because he saw that book Bix had posted that he was reading my book. That's even worse. That's, that's so here, these, idiots, these idiots don't even know the catalogs of these publishers. They're so concerned about being morally upstanding citizens, they don't even read fucking Bizarro. You, the, the six of us on this show have read 10,000 more books than Don Noble and Jeff O'Brien will ever read. They are, yeah. they are bad for publishing. What do you guys think? Okay, so there's a name that doesn't get, there's a name that hasn't been mentioned all week in this whole drama and all this nonsense between what happened with Ben, what happened with me and all this. There's one name that hasn't been mentioned, and that's Nicholas Day, the guy that really truly runs all these uh, uh, publishing houses. Zach, uh, 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 Nick would be the one that actually cuts you a check if you're getting royalties for assuming the Savage Swamp Beast. That would be handled by Nick, not Don. Where's Nick in all this? Does it, it, is Nick on your on your threads uh, with Jeff O'Brien and Don Noble? Does Nick get involved in that and, and throw it around? up? And I believe I too am blocked by him. Now maybe I just didn't. He, find him. I, I kind of doubt it. I don't know if I'm blocked by Nicholas Day, but or if he just got off of Facebook because I don't recall seeing him on the Facebook for a long time. So here's my thing. Nick reached out to me a few years ago privately. And he tried to bury the hatchet with me. And Jeremy, you might even want to break this part of the show out later on. As, as this is me speaking directly to Nick. Day. A few years ago, Nick, you tried to reach out to me. You tried to bury the hatchet. You tried to put all this six years of bullshit behind us. And I wasn't in a place yet where I was able to, to, to get past all the shit that you and Don have thrown my way over the years. So I didn't respond to you. I'm telling you now, publicly, this is my, this is my plea to you. Get a hold of me. Reach out. Reach out to me. Reach out to Jeremy. Reach out to any of these guys. Because I have a feeling, Nick, that you're start, you're feeling the same uh, you're feeling the same weight, the same albatross around your neck as I did when I was in business with Don. But this guy, this this emotionally out of control loser, is just he's, he's latched onto you and he's reaching onto you and he's taking he's taking credit for for these publishing houses. That I'm about 99.9% sure you do all of the work for. So this is this is my uh, plea to you: reach back out, reach back out to me or Jeremy or any of these guys, and we'll we'll help you navigate whatever waters we need to navigate to get to get you away from this this, this toxic group of this this whisper network of Don and and Jeff O'Brien and all and all these toxic uh, SJW weirdos that have uh, that have. You know, tangled you in their web and drag you into this petty bullshit drama. You're way too talented of a writer, an editor, and publisher to be held down by these these uh, these simpleton um, these, these drama queens that act like teenage girls. You're you're you, I've I've known you since you were 15. We were 15 years old in high school together, and uh, you know I know that your your goals in life were not to be part of a petty uh, teenage girl whisper network uh, of bizarro fiction. You're, you're far too talented for us. So this is my plea to Nicholas Day. Get get at us and, and let us help you get untangled from this ridiculous mess and these, these horribly toxic people. That's all I have to say about that. What do you think about that, Jeremy Maddox? <laughs> well, yeah, I'll talk to him. Uh it's important to have enough sack that you're willing to weather the storm when these uh, when these when they, when they're in the business of shaming you, you know. Uh, 
And I I am still hearing a little feedback. Is that your TV, Phoenix, or? Um, it might be my computer. I mean, oh. it might be the fan. Yeah, is oh. it pretty distracting? I don't know. It's, to me, it sounds like a a, a fight. It sounds like a fan yeah. and maybe some sort of a television program running in the background or something. Maybe. Like a fight scene no. in Ball Z. I don't know. I thought um, I heard us, us talking like echoing in it a few times. Do you have like a tab open with like the the uh, video playing? Maybe. Um. So it shows it nothing that I've never seen before. It just shows the screen. Mm-hmm. Just the Streamyard screen. Well, you don't have you don't have YouTube up though. That's what we're getting. At. No, no, okay, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't seem as bad now, so it, it's yeah. Cool. It's like when you talk, it's fine. Well, anyway, um, but uh, so so yeah. I mean, if he wanted to come on, but I, I somehow I I think that he's going to continue to be, you know, Don's cowboy. I don't know. So you went to high school with Nicholas Day? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. I've known, known him for 15 years. Huh. But yeah, I think Jared uh, realized that you know he gave them too much power when he did you know uh, remove you, you know. And uh, what, did it, what did it take? That's had two two fucking releases before they were more relevant than any of those presses that Don Noble and Nick Day run now. That is true. They, they, they they're do. releasing a lot of good shit with a lot of good authors. There's no question there. So now he's in a position where he can you know you can be like, oh, I wouldn't do that again. But at the time, that was the first. I think that was the first book they were going to put out. And here comes yeah. the old dumbass. Yeah, I think it was the yeah, I think it was the first thing. That was like the maiden voyage kind of thing. Uh, I think the how and how follows. Out? Did they like post the table of contents on Facebook or something? I think so. Okay. So, I mean, he didn't have an answer for why Gary was in there and you weren't strange. And he said well, he, he, didn't. he did. He had an answer. No, he said, weren't. No, he, said, people, he, he just there. said, no, he just said people weren't. I, he just agreed with me that people weren't making a stink about Brown. Right. He said, you've got me there. I don't have an answer. He said that at one time. Well, no, but he said basically, right, that he didn't know much about the guy. Right. Mm-hmm. And that people weren't making a stink about the guy. And if he said he said if they had been making a stink about the guy, he probably would have dumped him too. Well, the point Strange and I have been making though is that you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't feel compelled to do a background check on an author. No, I mean I agree with that, but, but I'm just saying what he said, right? You know what I mean? And and I agree with you shouldn't have to do background checks on your authors, right? Yeah. You, 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 you get a submission, you get a submission, and you like the story, and then you pay them through PayPal, right? And Instead of the contract, all, you're done. You know, that's all it should be. Yes. Right. Right. Or we all have to write under fucking disguised pen names like like we live in a Philip K. Dick novel. Yeah, like like what like what I do. Yeah, nobody can criticize your past, Gregor. Nobody knows who the fuck you are. Exactly. I know who he is. I don't I don't run around uh, dead naming yeah. people and harassing minors at movie theaters. I don't do any of these things. But know, we all know. we all know who Gregor is. We don't know that for sure because we don't know who you are. Well, know, yeah, you don't know, know that for Great. sure. What's that? Great. Gregor, Gregor, Z- uh, Gregor Zane is is the, he's just literally that 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 goat thing there. He's yeah, a goat yeah. head. He's a guy with a goat head. Phoenix, right. uh, do you have any haters or detractors? You know that that constantly follow you around to see what you're going to do next. <laughs> thing or? Pre- present company no. excluded. <laughs> that would be miserable. Jeez. Yeah. Now, have you ever had like pushback from being on this show? Because we never had until. Like the whole thing with Ben, that was really the first pushback that we got. Have you well, ever I mean, that, I mean, that wasn't because Ben was on the show. I thought really. it was. The first I, I like, no, it was because Ben made a, 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 a error in judgment. He was being too familiar with a reader and thought that this particular reader would think it was funny when he was making a joke, a somewhat disparaging remark about her in jest, and she took it the wrong way and maybe overreacted, right? Well, I mean, that was the, the crux of it, right? Like they were just grasping at straws trying to come up with something. Well, I, I feel like – so I was just going to say that I think um, – I mean, I'm on the side of free speech, you know? Like, sure, there are some things we probably shouldn't say, but, I mean, from everything I've seen from this – podcast like everything's been fine like 
maybe I don't agree with everything, but that doesn't mean I would want to shut it down. There are some things. What about what about Jim Goad, who literally beat his girlfriend and, and did hard time in prison? Jeremy, would you have Jim Goad on this podcast? Yeah. Okay, so again, what the fuck does people's background I mean, get, So yeah, I mean, the thing is that uh, I don't know who Jim Goat is really, right? But he did he did do what you said he did, right? And he went to prison, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming he's out of prison. He paid his, his, his you know, his price mm-hmm. to society, right? So if you can't really, you know, like what's, if you're never, if, if going to prison is not enough, right? What is enough, Right. So I, mean, I so I don't yeah. I don't know the context of that specifically, but I was just saying that like I think the problem is we make a lot of ad hominem comments and decisions about other people, and I think the problem with that is you don't get into the substance of like what someone's actually saying, and so from what I've seen just with people trying to tear me down, a lot of it is literally like they're making comments and criticisms about me as a person instead of what I'm saying. And that really is one of the best way to discredit someone. Oh, you associate with them. You must be bad. Like you hear this all of the time in in, uh, the political sphere, right? Like this is one of the dirtiest ways that you can completely ruin a person's reputation. Right. Yeah. I mean, and also there has to be some sort of a forgiveness, um, you know, uh, policy, right? I mean, you know, like some people do shit that's not good and they admit it later. Right. And they, you know, well, what about, redemption. what about rehabilit- gotta be a redemption arc, right? I mean, we right, have a lot of people, right. what about rehabilitation too? Right. I mean, right, that's right. part of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just you know? think I, I wish people were more compassionate towards others, honestly. Right. Exactly. Um, I mean, yeah. that's what it really, what it ultimately comes down to. Right. I mean, like, you know, if, you know, I, you know, if somebody comes, uh, ultimately and says, you know, I did this thing a few years back and I realized now that that was a pretty shitty ass thing to do. I'm publicly apologizing for doing that. I knew it was wrong, but you know, I felt that was justified at the time. People were being shitty to me, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's fine. You know, if it was a sincere apology, if it's sincerely, you know, you got to give people second chances, you know? So I, I you know, I, I just don't see don't realize that humans are valuable and do bad things. It's like they literally believe that they're so like morally righteous they can be the arbiters. It's just disgusting. Right, right. And then they, they, and then the same people will say like, oh, you know, like they'll they'll criticize somebody that's a, openly a Christian, right? And say, oh, this openly Christian person did something that wasn't great, right? A sin of whatever the case may be, as if that's somehow a problem considering that Christians generally uh, acknowledge the fact that they're sinners period. Right. I mean, so like what, how that's not a valid criticism, you know, it's just ridiculous. They throw it around, but eh, it's annoying. So who decided, uh, who decided that Gouda cheese was a good idea? I still can't get over how bad that was. I think I like Gouda cheese. I I don't mind it. I like it. What, what do they put on a gyro? What do they put on a gyro? Is that feta or is that gouda? That's feta. Oh, I don't know if I like a gouda. Yeah. So gouda's gouda's pretty good because it's smoked. <laughs> oh, I don't like gouda. No, that's not good. No, that's not good. I know what you're talking no? about. No, you're right, Jeremy. You're right, Jeremy. You're <laughs> you you think it's no gouda? No, it's no gouda whatsoever. <laughs> no. Um, I like all cheese. I also want to go on record real quick and say that privately, I was against putting the screws to. Um, to Jared Barbie, <clears throat> I actually wa- I actually wanted to avoid that subject altogether. Just I didn't want him to have to do that publicly, but he did it anyway. And now that we're on the other side of it, uh, you know, I, I feel fine about it. But this was not th- this was not me saying like let's get this guy on the show and then make him uh, uh, make him answer for throwing me out of his anthology. Uh, Jeremy, will you attest to the fact that I was actually against doing that? Well, yeah, but I mean, it's not your show. But yeah, you did say I don't want to be, you know. Uh, uh, on trial, I'm tired of being on trial or something. Is what you said, right? So. The endless trial by social media it never yeah. ends. As Gregor was saying, there's no redemption arc for it. You got to understand. Like an- you got to understand. Mm-hmm. A quiet place. You know, we we talk about personal things. I mean, it's the quiet place. You know. Sure, uh, Jeremy. It's 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 my life, and I said I didn't. I did. It's just no. There's no reason to keep you know bringing bringing my drama into it. I'm not. I'm not trying to start an argument about it. I'm saying. I'm just saying that for the listeners, for the context of this, that that wasn't my plan. 
I didn't plan on you guys talking about me on the on the show with him. That was your that was your uh, idea, and I understand that you you have my back as my friend, and I appreciate that. And I think on the other side of that conversation with him, uh, it ended well. It, it did well. It seemed like something he was happy to get off his back and happy mm. to apologize for publicly, and so it went it went well. Uh, I just for for the audience listening now, I want you guys to know I was actually against that. I told you it would be all right. I would turn out all right though. You Never. did, and I said, I said. So then, in the end, I said, "Fine, go ahead, do do it, do, and, your show, and, do it." And I didn't burn a bridge or, or you yeah. know, totally grill the guy. It was it was a nice mutual. But uh, had you had you, I'd be on here right now saying, "I told you so." Jeremy, I told you so. 